G'day, welcome to the Boomerang channel. Indoors today, I'm gonna to show you how we make Boomerang like this, the Little Ripper, or this is a version of the Little Ripper. All right, first thing you need to do is mortgage your house and uh, buy yourself some of the world's most expensive plywood. Finnish birch plywood. Uh, this is a six millimeter that I'm using because this is for one of my bigger boomerangs. Um, doesn't have a name as yet. It's, a, it's still a, a one that I'm working on. This one of course is the Little Ripper which is actually quite famous around the place. And you, know, you notice the shape is uh, very very consistent um, with those. Um, and to get that profile shape, what I do is I start out by marking out my plywood, obviously multiple um, things on my template. I mark, I mark out and then I cut out that basic rough shape to put on my routing profile template. It has little location pins. And you notice for right handers, which are 14 out of the 15 throwers you'll find around the place, I have my template marked out back to front, if you like. So it would be, if this was the face side, this would be for a left handed thrower. Okay? Because, because this is the dingle arm, this is the lift arm. And right, the, the, end, the end that you uh, grab when you go to throw the boomerang. And the reason I, I put my template backwards is so that these little holes that the, uh, these location pins make appear in the back of the boomerang. So this is my face side when the boomerang's finished and it won't have ugly little holes in it. Okay, so that's the first tip. All right, now I'll go to the, uh, the marking out with my stencil. Right. <clears throat> So this is my stencil laid out on top of my ply, my sheet of ply, okay, and you'll notice that it has these grooves cut in it, and I'll tape, tape down the edges so it doesn't slip around on me, but basically all I do is start at one end with a pen. Just run my pen on the pencil all the way down. Okay, and that way I've worked out there's no wastage, well, minimal wastage when I go to um, cut my, uh, my sheet on the bandsaw. I have the maximum number of boomerangs that I can get to do one sheet. You know, it'll vary depending on the design. But with this particular design, which I've never marked out for before, I've made a few prototypes and so forth. But I can see by my stencil I'll get 15 boomerangs out of the sheet. As I said before, this is a new design. Um, just for making, if you like. It's very uh, painstaking to make this stencil in the first place. I use uh, like a polycarbonate, um, or uh, I think it's a polystyrene or polycarbonate, clear polycarbonate. Um, it's a flexible polycarbonate sheeting. I could be wrong, could be polystyrene. I get from an art supply, there's a stencil material, cut it out with an exacto knife. So I cut slots in here for my pen to run into. You can see I have I have to stop here, here and here on each one, each line, otherwise the stencil wouldn't hold itself together. So here we go. Remove the stencil and you see all the cut lines for the bandsaw so I can elim eliminate wastage. Okay.
Right, next stage. Now I've cut out my blank roughly. All right, is I put it on my routing template. And I've made the routing template by just having my cutting out a shape of my profile exactly how I want it. Uh, then I countersink some holes here and I put some normal thumbtacks in there and I glue them in with a nice hard epoxy glue and I glue some little pieces onto the back there as well that I can grab hold of so I don't get my fingers in the way of my machine so I always so I know what I'm grabbing then I just line up that on my template like so and I push it down doing this off camera I know but there you go so I pushed it down so it's firmly held in and now I'm going to only take off the edge and I've used a router bit in my router like like that all right which got a ball bearing on top and it cuts that's the cutting edge there all right cuts to the profile of the board so it goes along the edge of my thing, my profile, and takes off the uh, the work, the excess, exactly to that profile. So I'll show you how I do that. Can separate that out. You got your nice profile ready, ready cut, ready for shaping. So here I use about a 60 grit paper on my sander and uh, do the first cut.
And there's my basic shape. So I've got around a 15 degree gradient. I've got 45 degree sort of bull nose edge on the edge of the lift arm. Same sort of thing happening on the dingle arm, but you can see my dingle arm is, doesn't have that same curve to it. It's got a slight curve. A little bit of undercut there on the tips of the lift arm and the dingle arm. And I can use my uh, laminations as a guide to seeing how consistent that curve is. All right, and I can, you know, if, if, if it's just one straight flat plane, the gaps between the lamination lines are gonna be exactly the same all the way through. But what I wanna get is if, if I'm doing a curve like the back of an aircraft wing, all right, they start out spaced apart and then they get closer and closer and closer and closer together till we get to, to the edge. I don't want any sharp edges, all right, because I don't wanna cut anyone. They're normally the trailing edges, so it's not it's not what's going to impact your hand when you catch it. But with the bigger boomerangs, this is a uh, 12 ply, 6 mil finished birch ply, aircraft grade. Um, that will hold its shape really, really well once I've got it. Uh, once I've gone and tested it, um, and seeing if I need to make any more modifications. This because this is a new model, I'm still working on each of these. Um, and but but uh, by eye, that should that should give me a good return. Uh, but the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Test it. Not bad. <laughs> so that's it, the cracker. A little bit like the little ripper. That's a little ripper. That's the cracker. As you can see, they're different size, different profile, less of a hump in the elbow there. A bit more opened out, legwise. I get the uh, relative perspective there. Okay. Magic of technology. But this is made out of uh, uh, 12 ply, 6 millimeter 12 ply finished birch. This is made out of 4 mil finished birch, uh, 8 ply. Um, and it's designed for a more powerful throw. You can handle the wind a whole lot better and a lot easier to catch, as you just saw. Uh, more expensive to make. Uh, Therefore, it's more expensive to buy, but it's a uh, it's a good boomerang to have in your bag. And if you like the little ripper, you'll love this. <laughs>